thank you for having us. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, about your project, if you could describe it. Um, so, Line Design started uh, roughly 10, 10 years ago. So, it was not um, working the, the whole time, but the, the, the beginning was 2007 with my partner and founder, Rita Mel. It started with uh, as a workshop for eco-design projects. Mm -hmm. So um, Rita, as a designer, was very concerned about the the, the waste of uh, drinking packages, like milk cartons and, and all that. Um, so she decided she wanted to tackle that problem and develop a design project reusing those materials. Um, so um, she talked to Tetra Pak mm -hmm. in, in that moment. And she, she told them she had this project and she wanted to, to start a social workshop, so combining both, both worlds, so reusing the materials and having it as like a therapeutic a process. In this case, um, now functioning is it at an association of um, mentally disabled uh, people. Because it, she, she understood, well, this was a long research, and she understood also that for them, the repetitive movement mm -hmm. was also something good to um, help, to the help them, exactly, the coordination, the, the fine matricity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Tetra Pak really enjoyed the project from, from the day one, so they really embraced it. and. Um, so this, like 10 years ago, was quite innovative in, in Portugal because this is like the new stage of social corporate responsibility, mm -hmm. which is like projects that actually um, go in the long run. It's not a one one day shot or like a couple of months. Um, so then they sponsored the, the building of the whole, the setting of the whole workshop, and then like they designed uh, many products like merchandise and now some like beach bags and they're really really cool and <laughs> it's been going on since then and also like the sales of the um, of the products mm -hmm. go fund the projects of the association wow. so this was Keeps uh, feeding itself exactly yeah. exactly so by then this this was very new and <laughs> um so then like after a couple of years um it was always like on and off, and then like two years ago, she, she met with our partner, Nuno, and then they decided, Nuno is economist, economist is, okay. so they decided they needed to join both worlds to make this work properly. Nuno was a big fan of blind design and Rita's projects. Um, so they, they got together and they started working also not just, now not only in like uh, eco and social design projects, but now working properly with consultancy to mm -hmm. making sure like uh, the projects are sustainable because now we have like this axis of the economic side so it was like the perfect combination <laughs> and then I met them <laughs> a year ago because we had like a project in common um, that's like not a project yet it was more like a dream in common <laughs> and someone knew the three of us and and we got together and we're like, okay, we need to talk. <laughs> so um, I've, I've been like a traditional product designer and like just recently I started developing this, this new world of design for social innovation and so they were like the perfect partners and we've been <laughs> working together since then. That's nice. And personally, what were your motivations to start working? in social innovation? Um, I've been always uh, related to social projects, but not in a professional mm -hmm. way. It was more like a volunteering um, side project, because I was always working in the creative fields, and I really love like, what I do in design. And after a couple of experiences with um, like traditional like furniture, or luxury, or this kind of fields in, in design, that I really felt like, why am I doing this for? Like, who am I working for? I was really feeling unidentified with the purpose of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, so after a couple of frustrated <laughs> experiences, <laughs> I was like, no. And, and I really, really believe like design is a really powerful tool. And I've been saying this since I, I was a big dreamer in un university. And so like, 
I understood that this it had to be more than this. So I was constantly like leaving some projects that I did not believe in mm -hmm. because I thought like now if this is what this being a designer means, then I don't want to be a designer. So until I found what I really <laughs> believe, okay, so this is why you are a designer. And now finally, I now think it like makes sense. It, now it makes sense because definitely like design is a very powerful mm -hmm. tool to solve problems in general. It's not just to build beautiful things. It's definitely way much more than that. And I think like as like social problems, if that is a problem, then the design tool can be a very powerful tool to help look at it from a different perspective, look understand it from a different side, and then coming up with solutions that will be different for sure. Okay. I would like to know, in your opinion, what's the role of leadership in social innovation projects? And you can talk from your own experience. Um, yeah, from, from my experience and also from the work we develop at Line Design, um, I believe like the, the biggest secret for leadership is to listen, is to actively listen because um, you may think you know what the, the answer is, but you actually don't if you don't um, really make like zero from what mm -hmm. you believe you, you know. And you really understand what are the, why does this problem exist? And you will only understand that if you really sit down and listen to the people who actually suffer from the consequences of that problem. And for me, that's like the key thing. Is you you have you have to be in their shoes as mm -hmm. as much as you can. Of course, like literally, you can't because the experience will never be the same. But in what you're capable, at least just listening. Um, to properly understand, you have to do that. Otherwise, you'll be working, and like, what the output will re really yeah. not respond to what people um, actually need. Mm -hmm. And active listening is active. related to empathy. So exactly. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah empathy probably. It's, yeah, I think the, the way to empathy is like to <laughs> active, yeah. actively listening, but but definitely to. To work on the same level, mm -hmm. to work with with the people, and and for them. Okay, and for young social innovators, um, what kind of advice would you give regarding their leadership skills? Well, regarding my own personal experience, and I think we we share this <laughs> with each other in the team. I think as much as you can, go and travel. Traveling is actually a big key to make you humble, to make you understand that um, like different contexts and different challenges uh, you, you can find like anywhere in the world, but it, we're all pretty much the same. What the human being wants and needs is mm -hmm. pretty much basically the same. And... And this is a, a lesson that you take pretty much from, from traveling. And I think that is for us like the, the biggest humble, humbleness, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> um, lesson that you can take. And I think that's a big key for, for leaders, I think, because that will let you understand the other mm -hmm. and then you'll be more respectful and you'll be more humble. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you. You're welcome.